Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And man, are we starting off with some pretty crazy news. Starting on March the 29th, a brand new build series will debut. But instead of being an anime, it's going to be a live action drama series. It'll be called Gundam Build Real and I really wonder how real the Gunpla battles are going to look. The 15 second sailor, uh, trailer we have so far it doesn't really show us a lot. It shows some characters being dramatic, uh, playing around with Gunpla, but since they don't actually show any of the Gunpla fighting, and since they've already confirmed that they are going to be using CG elements, I'm afraid that the quality of the potentially CG battles are going to come second to the drama. Because after all, if the CG was going to be top notch, I would have expected it to take a more center stage during their first trailer. Anyways, we also got a synopsis of the story. As a kid, our main character Hito teamed up with his friends and formed Team Bright. Their goal was to win a local tournament, but since none of them had enough money to buy a Gumpla to enter the tournament by themselves, they all pooled their money together and bought a real great RX-78 too. They then built it and upgraded it together and dubbed it Nanahachi, or in English, 7-8. However, the day before the tournament, disaster strikes and Nanahachi is nowhere to be found, even though it should have been in Hiro's bag. So he jumps to the obvious conclusion, one of his friends, one of his team members, must have stolen the Gundam. And here we are, like what, four days after my video on stolen Gundams where I ended the video by saying it'll probably be, well that the video will probably be outdated, by the time the next Gundam series rolls around, and here we are already. Anyways, obviously, him accusing his friends without any actual proof was quite bad for the team atmosphere, and they disbanded, never being able to participate in the tournament. Four years later then, they meet each other again when they're about to enter high school, and they decide to revive Team Bright. But this time, they're aiming for the Nationals. And because this is a drama, there will no doubt be plenty of infighting, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was like a subplot about the stolen Nanahachi, which I guess they got back? Because that Gundam Nanahachi is seemingly going to be the main Gundam again, so at some point they must have gotten it back. Um, my only real complaint with the story is that for some reason, five kids had to lump their money together to buy a real great RX-78 II, which is like, dude, it's a 2000 yen model kit. It's not a, a super advanced robot pet like a Metabot or something, when it would actually make sense that the main character cannot buy one by himself. Maybe you need like expensive modifications to allow them to participate in the Gundam fight in this universe, but you know, in the other Gundam um, build fighter series and stuff like that, you just build a real Gunpla, you put it in there and it's good to go. Maybe they had some expensive modifications that they also wanted to do. I don't know, we'll have to see about that, but hey, it's a drama. Then one cool thing that they also announced is that, of course, the characters in the series will be using customized Gunplas and they will, of course, be releasing model kits of those, but, since all of them will be using parts from existing model kits, they will also be putting out tutorials one way or another to show us how we can build those model kits ourselves with model kits that are already out there. So if there's like a side character using an obscure Gunpla made with some obscure parts that you just know Bandai isn't going to make as a model kit, you will still be able to make that model kit if you are a fan of it. So that is a pretty cool thing they decided to do. So far we know about two Gunpla that will appear in the series. Of course the aforementioned Nanahachi, which is, well, a real great RX-78 too, which uses a custom colored bazooka that somehow makes it twice as powerful. Sure. 
and on the enemy team then we of course get a custom Shars Zaku which uses a Leo shield over its spike shield and also uses a Zaku machine gun with a bayonet that like I know I've seen it somewhere but it's on the tip of my tongue but I I can't place it where I've seen it I just it's so familiar but I don't know where also the color scheme feels more like a Johnny Ryden custom as opposed to a Shars Zaku custom. And then if you now feel like picking up some gunplay yourself to start to work on your own custom machine, I will also have a link down below to Hobbling Japan's spring sale that is currently going on until the 25th. In addition to Gunpla, there is of course also a bunch of other stuff on sale as well, so definitely worth checking out. Then the second bit of awesome news this week was the announcement of more English Gundam manga. Denpa Books announced on Twitter that in the summer of 2022 they will be, re they will be releasing all seven volumes of Mobile Suit Gundam Sharks Counterattack Beltorchica's Children. This one right here. And for those who are out of the loop on Beltorchica's Children, this was originally released as a novel all the way back in like um, 1988 and offered readers an alternative retelling of Shars Counterattack. And the really cool thing here is that it was written by Yoshiyuki Tomino himself. Now the most important differences are obviously, as you can tell by the title, Beltorchica plays a very important role as she is pregnant. And then also we now have the Nightingale and the new gun the high new Gundam instead of the Sazabi and the normal new Gundam. And this has also led to some confusion amongst the fan base who've only played the video games, where the High New and Nightingale are often seen as upgrades to their like animated canonical counterparts, whereas they are replacements. And another reason why it's pretty cool that we're getting this manga in English now is because the novelization of Hathaway's Flash actually follows up on the novelization of Beltorchica's Children. So definitely worth picking up once this thing gets released. Now the manga itself is made by Uroaki Sabichi with the help of mechanical designer Yanase Takayuki and while the art style isn't completely my thing, it is a little bit basic on the characters. There's no denying that it is well drawn and especially the cover art of the fourth volume is pretty epic. All that's left to say then is that I will definitely be picking these up because the only way to get publishers to publish more English Gundam manga is by supporting them, which is what I fully intend to do. Also, if you cannot wait that long, this summer they will also be releasing the English version of The Men Who Created Gundam, which is better known as Gundam Sosei, or that one crazy Gundam manga starring Yoshiyuki Tomino himself that gave us an over-the-top retelling of how the first Gundam series was made. Also, for people who are wondering why the title changed, um, that's not a translation thing. Gundam Sosei was the name of the manga when it was being published, like when it was being serialized in a magazine, and the men who created Gundam is the actual name when it became a Tankobon volume. On to the pre-orders then that went live this week. From P Bandai, we're getting a bunch of F90 love with, first of all, a new mission twin pack. This includes the R-Type, which is like a stealthy recon unit, including a camera as well. And then the V-Type, which is the VSBR type, which would then be further developed into the Gundam F91 that we all know and love today. The set will only cost you 2,530 yen, like $24, um, and is scheduled for a June release. But keep in mind, you're only getting the parts. You're not getting an actual F90 Gundam with that. At that price, that should be obvious, but you never know. So because of this, of course, both Unit 1 and 2 are getting restocked as well, along with a bunch of other mission packs. So grab yours while they last. Somewhere out there, I just imagine there being a giant F90 fan who has like 26 Unit 1s, all ready to be equipped with all 20, 26 mission packs and then he also has 26 unit 2s 
also ready to be equipped with every single one of the mission packs. Anyways, if you still need some more late Universal Century stuff for 9,680 yen or like a nice $90, you can get yourself a titanium finish Gundam F91 in July. And judging from the pictures, it won't just be the F91 that'll have that amazing titanium finish, but also the Rafflesia base. Exactly what I needed. Shiny tentacle rape. And to go along with this tentacle rape, we are of course also getting the extra finish Vignagina in July, which will set you back 7,040 yen. And you know what? With the Vignagina already being like a fancy silver mobile suit, this actually feels less like a special edition model kit and kind of feels like, you know, how the mobile suit would look in real life. Then from the Robot Damashi series, pre-orders went live for the Galguk Marine version anime, giving us an action figure that looks as great as it is expensive. For 7,920 yen, you too can own a fully featured Marine Galguk in August. And in addition to the normal accessories you'd expect, like beam sabers, a knuckle shield, and a machine gun, it also comes with two Sturmfausts. A nice addition for that price. And seeing this action figure really makes me wish Bandai would go ahead and either revive the high grade or give us a 2.0 Galguk Marine. It really deserves it. And then if you still have some money left over for July, the Gundam base online has opened reservations for the real great Unicorn Gundam Perfectibility. And in a way, this model kit might actually be the perfect model kit of the Unicorn, at least until they turn it into a Master Grade Unleashed. And for a whopping 7,700 yen, $70, they'd better make it a really good model kit. Short of the full armor parts, it comes with basically everything a Unicorn model kit could come with, short of the full armor parts, which at some point I wouldn't be surprised if they released as well, giving us the Unicorn Gundam Perfectibility Divine. As for the stuff you can get right now then, as I mentioned last week, there is the Master Raid Zaku Warrior Live Concert version for 4,180 yen, and the RX-78 II Beyond Global Gundam Base Color, both available from the Gundam Base through venues like Site 7 Exports, linked down below. In other news then, Gundam is having a collaboration with the Pepper Parlor in Shibuya. And for those who don't know what Pepper is, it's a pretty damn advanced commercially available robot that you can actually find as an employee in certain Japanese stores. The Pepper Parlor then is a place where multiples of these terrifying robots and their dead eyes are working together in the hopes of promoting cooperation between humans and robots. I'm sorry, but this thing lands right in the middle of my uncanny zone and Rather than getting a feeling of coexisting, it's triggering my fight or flight reflexes. Anyways, how does the bar actually work? Well, at the reception, you've got the aforementioned army of standard peppers, now in fancy Gundam colors. Your food will then be served on a Roomba, and every hour there is a dance performance by now or NAO, who is now also totally Gundam themed because they super glued a Veef into his head. Amazing. This event will only last until May the 9th, but frankly I'm not losing any sleep over missing it out. I would probably be losing sleep if I did attend it. On the 16th then, we got some much better news. Yoshiyuki Tomino received the Anime Achievement Award at the Tokyo Anime Award Festival 2021. And all I can say here is, I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, the man and his crew almost single-handedly managed to make a completely new genre, the real robot genre. So congratulations on the very well-deserved reward. 
And then what would a week be without overpriced Gundam apparel? Strig G has been quite busy again as on the 13th they expanded their Johnny Raiden and Shin Matsunaga collection with a t-shirt for 6,380 yen or like $60. And I'll be honest, are these designs cool? Yes. Are they ridiculously overpriced? Totally. Would I pick them up if I was standing in a store like holding it being like, I actually quite want this. Definitely. Next up then, we've got some really cool t-shirts with ukiyo-e inspired designs at 5,280 yen or $50. They are slightly cheaper, albeit still a bit on the expensive side. The RX 782 and the Shar designs are kind of like an actual painting, whereas the Freedom and Justice designs are like merged with the t-shirt in a really cool fashion. Then for an additional 20 bucks, you can get the long sleeve t-shirts with a full body shot of either the Freedom and the Justice. And for $110, you can get that same design on a parka. And then finally, they're also having a collaboration with a French fashion brand, Patrick, to release some Gundam themed shoes. We have the perfect for kids Zeta theme, the retro Hyakushiki theme, and the really cool Psycho Gundam theme. And all of them will be going for a smooth 22,550 yen each, or like $200. And at first, this struck me as a really high price because Patrick's shoes around here are going for like 70 bucks for a pair. But apparently then, after a little bit more research in Japan, they seem to be going easily for $170. So yeah, the amazing intricacies of import and export, I guess. On the Bankore front then, we've got some really good news for the G Gundam fans out there because for 4,180 yen, you can now buy your very own God Finger hand warmer cushion. You can also get the King of Hearts design on a normal cushion for 3,850 yen, a toad back for 2,200 yen, a tapestry for also 2,200, a mini towel for 880, a keychain for also 880, and then a bandana for 2,420 yen. And then for your model kits, you can also get an acrylic G Gundam logo available in small for 1,320 yen and a big one for 1,650 yen. And this week there is again a crazy poll happening over at Gundam.info, so let's wrap up Gundam news with that again. Since Sharp's counterattack will be shown in cinemas again in Japan, probably to also celebrate the Hathaway's Flash movie, the question this time around is which character are you looking forward to seeing playing an active role? So I'm taking that as a roundabout way of asking who is your favorite character of Sharp's counterattack? And some of the results were actually quite surprising. Now, one thing I gotta point out before we're looking at the results so far is that Shar and Amro are not included in the poll, presumably to keep things at least a little bit fair. So, going from lowest voted to highest voted, with 24 votes so far, we have a tie between Rezin and Keira. I mean, I can understand Keira, she really got the short end of the stake by being the uh, Rigazis pilot. She didn't really have a lot of moments to shine. Like, she died and had Astonosh cry over and that's kind of it. And Rezin, I mean, I remember her in one of the earlier scenes like leading other Giradogas in her Giradoga. And then I like remember her bitching a bit over Gyune, which I mean, I can totally relate to. But other than that, I don't remember her doing a lot of special things. Then with 31 votes, we have Nanai, who I would have expected to be a bit higher. Like, I get it. She also doesn't really play a super active role as opposed to some other characters. But she, I'm, looking at the other characters that beat her out, I would have expected her to be higher. Like on 32, we have Astonosh. I have nothing against Astonosh, but 
I'm, I also have nothing particularly in favor of the guy. With 41 votes, then we have Cameron. Again, I feel that Nanai kind of got the short end of the stick here, being beaten out by Cameron as well. Then on 50, we have Gune. Honestly, I just remember that guy being annoying more than anything else. And I mean, I just really wanted him to die. So at least that's something to look forward to when watching the movie. With 51 votes, then we have Chan. Again, a character I was expecting to be higher up. Like, yeah, she's still relatively high, but it's again the characters that beat her out that will be coming up now that really makes me a bit annoyed to see her so low because with 65 votes we have Quest, which I know a lot of people hate her. I, I don't necessarily have anything against Quest. Like I can understand her situations and whatnot, but with 67 votes we have Hathaway. No, just no. How is Team Killer Hathaway in second place? Like, the only reason I feel bad about Hathaway's situation is because his dad has to deal with the same situation. And talking about his dad, Bright is, rightfully so, top place by a long shot. At 267 votes. I mean, that's completely deservedly. And maybe they should have just left Bright off this poll as well, just as I did with Amro and Char, because... I mean, that is the one very obvious thing I would have expected from this poll, that Bright was going to win. Although, I would have expected Chan to be second, to be honest. Anyways, that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.